All right, I want to ask everybody to look at the book of Isaiah tonight, chapter 45. Isaiah 45. It's Old Testament, Kevin. That's right, because all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. So we can learn something out of this tonight because it's God's inspired words. Amen. Old Testament and New Testament. Isaiah 45. Isaiah 45. I don't really have a whole lot of notes tonight. I just have a simple thought, a simple truth, just a simple idea that I want to preach. Isaiah chapter 45, starting in verse 18. If we could stand in respect of the, of the Word of God tonight, I'd appreciate it. Isaiah chapter 45, starting in verse 18. The Bible here says, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself hath formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. That's a good thought right there. We can look at our Monongalia National Forest over here in the eastern part of the state. It's there in vain. Somebody needs to go in there and inhabit that. Take that back from the federal government. It's good. It formed it to be inhabited. That's not my sermon. It's just an idea right there. I am the Lord, and there is none else. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, the Lord, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge to set up the wood of their graven image, and pray unto a God that cannot save. Tell ye, and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. Look unto me, and be ye saved, all the ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is none else. Let's just open up with a word of prayer. Dear Lord, just thank you so much for these words tonight. There's so much in here that you can preach 15, 25 different sermons out of just this small passage, these few verses that I've read. And be able to preach just hours, Lord. I just thank you for these words. And I just pray that you would help me to present and preach clearly um, what you've given me out of these at, the, at this time. Just fill me with your Holy Spirit power. Thank you for the good news of, of, a, of a man child being conceived in and, and, uh, and our family here, Lori and Adam. Lord, just thank you for that. I praise you for that. And I pray for them all as they, uh, as they go through pregnancy and everything, Lord. Just thank you for everything that you've done. And just be with me now as I preach. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. You know, maybe see it, of course. You know, the verse that I want to preach on there tonight is there in verse 20 of Isaiah chapter 45. These people, God is telling his people, assemble yourselves together and come. Draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up wood of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. That's the title of my sermon tonight, a God that cannot save. You know, we look across this land today, we go on trips, I drive to work and back at Clarksburg and everything, and we drive on vacations and stuff, and we just see, just in our day-to-day -day lives, that this is a, is, a, is, a, is a society, a world that's laden with idolatry. And look at Exodus chapter 20 while I continue to preach, we'll get there in just a minute. But Exodus chapter 20, let's go there and look. But we look out, we see monuments, we see statues of owls, we've got the, the, uh, the New World Order people, the Bohemian Grove out there, they go and they worship and they sacrifice things, bodies and effigy to that big giant owl out there in the middle of the desert and everything. We've got a world that is full of idolatry and witchcraft and sinfulness of this degree and of this kind. It's a God that cannot save. That's the concept that I want to preach. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's one of the Ten Commandments right there. That's something that you learn in Sunday school when you're five years old. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. It says there in verse 4 and verse 5, of the likeness of any fish in the sea or any birds of the air or anything in the earth or under the earth or anything. Don't make a picture. Don't make a, a graven image of anything at all. And yet you've got Hobbs Anderson College where they, where they rear up this statue of Jack Hobbs. You know, they make that man into a molten image and put him there and just say, Wow, remember Brother Hiles and all this kind of stuff, where that's a clear violation of the Word of God. Sure. You've got the Catholics that pray into this person they call the Queen of Heaven. You know, you read about it in the book of Jeremiah, how it's, it's a wicked thing. It's something that heathen people did. It's a God they cannot save, and yet you have cemeteries in our very state that say Queen of Heaven Cemetery. And it's a Catholic cemetery by St. John or any of those Catholic places you see in this world. We live in a world that is full of idolatry and witchcraft and, and these things that are just reared up. You have supposed pictures of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, across in churches and courthouses across this land and everything. And it's this, this long-haired, hippie, queer-looking guy. He's got long hair and he looks really sickly and really effeminate looking and all this kind of stuff. And it's just against the Word of God. Trust. I'll say it yeah. again. If you want to see who Jesus Christ is, you've got to read these words. Amen. That's the point of the sermon tonight. You know, this kind of idolatry is sinful. It's wicked. It, it, it's all gods they cannot save. 
Jack Hiles cannot save anybody. He's in heaven. He's the great cloud of witnesses right now. He did a lot while he was here. He got a ton of people saved. He preached many thousands of great sermons. He influenced the lives of many. Glory to God. But he's dead now. He cannot save. Only Jesus can save somebody. You know, we go out, we preach the gospel, we throw in the life raft of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, that's why Paul said, I have made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some of them. You know, he said that, but Jesus is the one who died on the cross for their sins. Jesus is the one who went to hell for three days and three nights. Jesus is the one who suffered and bled and died and paid the price in full for them. It's not a man. It's not Jack Hiles. It's not the Queen of Heaven. So let's look further into this. Look at First Chronicles chapter 16. 1 Chronicles chapter 16. Starting in there in verse 26. I just need one verse out of this passage before we move along. 1 Chronicles 16, verse 26. This is just giving us a little more, developing this idea of idolatry a little farther here. It says, For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. So if you have all these things you read about in the Old Testament, the God, the Molech, the Ashtaroth, the Baal, all these kinds of things, all these gods, they're just idols. Even though you might not be able to see them, they're just nothing more than an idol. They're something that they, they have placed between them and the true God of heaven, the true God of the King James Bible, the true God of the Word of God. They're making themselves another God in between there, and it's sinful, it's wrong, it's wit wicked in the eyes of God. 2 Kings 19.18 says, And have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the works of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. You know, you hear about the destroyal. It's always something, you know, Satan is a roaring, a roaring lion. He walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's out to destroy our lives. He's out to destroy our Christian witness and everything right there. So what these things are being compared to here is all the gods of the people are idols. And then we're also seeing this concept of being satanic to that degree between those two things. Because, you know, Satan, Lucifer, is the one who said, I will be like the most high. He's, he's the one that wanted to take God's place. He's the one that the NIV said took Jesus' place and cast Jesus out of heaven there in Isaiah 14, 12. Yeah. But we know what really happened is that he got kicked out of heaven That's at right. that time. Right. Or he didn't get kicked out of heaven. He doesn't get kicked out of heaven, per se, until Revelation 12, 9, where it says a great dragon was cast out. But figuratively, he was taken out of the place of the cherubim, the anointed cherub the cover at that time. He was taken out of that role. He was cast out of the earth. To make that very clear and scripturally doc, doc, you know, doctrinally correct according to the scriptures there. But let's look at this even farther. I want you to look at Deuteronomy chapter 4. So we see, first of all, these people. It exists. There's no new thing under the sun. So there must be some people today that pray into a God that cannot save. Deuteronomy chapter 4. You know, and we also see that all the gods of the people are idols. So all these false gods that are out there in the world are nothing but idolatry. All the monuments, all the things that people rear up, it's nothing but idolatry. It's nothing but a, a replacement for who God is. And we see that it's destructive. And that Satan's goal is to destroy people. So therefore, Satan's hand is behind this, as we know, because he is the, he's the one who wanted to take God's place to begin with. Deuteronomy chapter 4, and verse 28. The Bible here says, And there ye shall serve gods in the work of men's hands wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Now hang on to that last part there. Neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Maybe keep a finger there and look at Revelation chapter 9. <clears throat> look at Revelation chapter 9. I want to compare some scripture with scripture right here, and we'll see this develop even a little farther. Revelation chapter 9, verse 